Ok, Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera. So, now let's proceed to subtopic 5.2. So, subtopic 5.2 is about Hardy-Weinberg law. Ok, so first of all, you have to know the Hardy-Weinberg principle. So, what is Hardy-Weinberg principle? So, allele and genotype frequency in a population remain constant, which is at genetic equilibrium. From generation to generation Okay, so means that based on the Hardy-Weinberg principle Okay, uh, dia menunjukkan bahawa Okay, dia menerangkan bahawa Allel and genotype frequency in a population ni Akan remain, akan tetap berada dalam keadaan constant Okay, daripada satu generation kepada generation yang seterusnya Okay, so how Okay, the condition Uh, which must be met for the law to work Maksudnya macam mana kita nak pastikan bahawa LL and also genotype frequency ni remain constant Daripada satu generation kepada next generation It is based on the assumption in Hardy-Weinberg law Okay so there are five assumption here Okay so the first one a uh, large population size okey so bila kita katakan population size ni berada dalam keadaan large ataupun besar okey so dia akan menyebabkan bahawa allel and also genotype frequency in a population remain constant why because genetic drift can be avoided okey and also allel frequency in large population has less chance to change so maksudnya bila berlaku ataupun kita bila kita katakan population tu berada dalam large population so dari segi chances of the allel frequency ni untuk berlaku perubahan adalah rendah okey and then next a uh, random mating Okay, so random mating refers to each individual has equal chance to mate freely or randomly with any other individual from opposite sex within population. Okay, random mating uh, ni maksudnya kita refer kepada setiap individual, okay, di dalam sesuatu population akan mempunyai chances yang sama, okay, has equal chance to mate freely or randomly with any other individual, okay. Uh, from opposite sex Okay So this is the uh, Second assumption Of the Hardy-Weinberg And then next No mutation Or no net mutation So No changing of one allele Into another So gene pool Is not altered So bila berlaku Ataupun bila kita katakan Mutation tidak berlaku So Apa keadaannya adalah Gene pool Is not altered Not altered means Tak berlaku perubahan Kepada gene pool So that's why Allele frequency And also genotype frequency In a population will be remain constant ok and then number 4 no migration ok so since there is no migration here so no genetic drift ok genetic drift tak berlaku and then no gene flow due to immigration ok immigration into or emigration out of population ok And then the last one, no natural selection. Okay, so no selection of favored heritable trait. Okay, maksudnya tak berlaku selection kepada mana-mana favored ni yang kita pilih, heritable trait. Okay, and then all individuals are equally fertile and have the same potential to re produce. Okay, nah, so means that for assumption in Hardy-Weinberg law, so awak mesti kena ingat lah, there are five assumption. The first one we call as large population size. Second, random mating. Next, no mutation. Then, no migration. The last one, no natural selection. Okay. And then, if you look at this one, in nature, this condition are rarely met in any population. So, secara kebiasaannya, secara semula jadi, okay, semua condition ni susahlah, okay, untuk ditemui di dalam sesuatu population. Okay, because of what? If there is continuous changing of LL frequency, maksudnya jika berlaku perubahan secara perterusan dari segi LL frequency from one generation to another. So, this is an indication that evolution will take place. Okay, uh, so this is what we call as Hardy-Weinberg assumption. Okay, uh, so you have to take note lah for this one. Okay, so now we proceed to the Hardy-Weinberg equation. So, this one you have to take note because of what usually the question uh, will want you to, to calculate the LL frequency and also to calculate the genotype frequency. Okay, so based on Hardy-Weinberg equation, so we look at the calculation of LL frequency first. Okay, so the formula is P plus Q equal to 1. So, P is refers to the frequency of dominant LL. For the example, let's say kita... Uh, 
uh, representkan dominant allele tu sebagai capital A. Okay, YQ represent frequency of recessive allele. Okay, for the example, small a. Okay, so this one you have to take note. So, this is the uh, formula on how to calculate allele frequency which is P plus Q equal to 1. Okay, so yang ini maksudnya dia adalah based kepada Hardy-Weinberg equation. And then, how to calculate the genotype frequency. Okay, so the equation is P square plus 2PQ plus Q square equal to 1. Okay, so apa tu P square sebenarnya? P square represent frequency of homozygous dominant genotype. Okay, for the example, okay, genotype ni adalah A besar, A besar. Sebab tu kalau awak tengok balik, kalau A besar sahaja, kalau kita katakan dominant allele sahaja, it is represent by P. Ha, so, since bila kita kata genotype dia adalah homozygous dominant, which is A besar, A besar, ha, so that's why dia akan representkan by P square. Ha, sebab ada dua dominant allele dekat sini. And then kalau untuk 2PQ, Okay, it is represent frequency of heterozygous genotype. So, the example here is A besar, A kecil. Okay, and then the other one, Q square, represent frequency of homozygous recessive genotype. Okay, for the example, A kecil, A kecil. Okay, and then you have to take note. Okay, frequency, bila awak tambahkan frequency of both dominant allele plus recessive allele, so awak akan dapat dia punya totalnya adalah satu. Okay, ha, sama juga dengan genotype frequency, bila awak tambahkan P square plus 2PQ plus Q square, okay, so bilangannya akan jadi satu. Okay, and then... Step on how to calculate allele frequency or genotype frequency. Okay, so this uh, this one you have to take note. Okay, so first of all, macam mana kita nak jawab soalan yang mana dia minta awak kira allele frequency ataupun genotype frequency. Okay, firstly, you find out homozygous recessive genotype frequency or Q square first. Okay, di dalam soalan biasanya kita kena identify dulu. Okay, berapa ataupun kita katakan... Um, Berapa homozygous recessive genotype frequency yang diberi di dalam soalan. Okay. And then next, bila awak dah jumpa, okay, bilangan untuk Q square, then find recessive allele frequency. So, recessive allele frequency is represent by Q. Ha, so, macam mana kita nak cari how, okay, so daripada Q square, kita dah dapat uh, bilangan untuk homozygous resource, uh, recessive genotype frequency tadi. So, macam mana kita nak jadi Q, so just find set of Q square. Ha, so, jadi macam ni lah, set of Q square, okay, so awak akan dapat bilangan untuk Q. Okay, lepas awak dah cari Q, okay, so ingat Q tu adalah apa? Q tu kita refer kepada recessive allele frequency. So, since awak dah dapat bilangan recessive allele frequency, okay, so once uh, Q is already calculate, so means that you can find the dominant allele frequency P, okay, by using equation P plus Q equal to 1. Maksudnya, once kita dah dapat cari Q, so automatically kita akan dapat cari P lah. So, macam mana kita akan cari P? So, just masukkan sahaja di dalam equation P plus Q equal to 1. So, kita dah dapat nilai P dan juga nilai Q tadi. And then from value of P and Q, so you can calculate the genotype frequency based on this equation. So, kita bolehlah cari genotype frequency for homozygous dominant which is P square. Just masukkan sahaja nilai P tadi. And then kita juga boleh cari, okay, the genotype frequency of heterozygous, okay, uh, which is 2PQ. And another one, nah kita boleh carilah, okay, the frequency ataupun the genotype frequency for homozygous re- Excessive. Okay, uh, so this is the step. Okay, on how to calculate the allele frequency and genotype frequency. Okay, so apa yang awak perlu ingat adalah kenapa awak mesti kena cari homozygous recessive genotype frequency dulu. Kenapa kita tak cari uh, the frequency of dominant allele dulu. Maksudnya kenapa kita tak uh, find. Okay, why cannot find dominant allele frequency P first. Okay, kenapa? Sebab, okay, kalau awak tengok dekat sini, for dominant phenotype, it is represent by two genotype uh, which are homozygous dominant represent by P square and also heterozygous which is represent by 2PQ. Uh, so, maksudnya kita kena consider kedua-dua ni barulah kita boleh cari nilai P. Uh, so, maksudnya susah untuk kita cari nilai P. So, lebih mudahnya kita terus cari nilai Q sebab untuk cari nilai Q awak cuma dapatkan sub of Q square sahaja. Ha, so, maksudnya kita bolehlah dapat nilai Q. So, tips dekat sini, jangan cari 
dominant allele frequency first just follow okay the tips that is given here okay just ikut saja okay and then uh, let's say if the question ask you to calculate the phenotypic frequency so apa yang awak kena stresskan adalah phenotype ni cuma ada dua sahaja sama ada dominant phenotype ataupun recessive phenotype so for the example here let's say tall ni adalah dominant phenotype short ni adalah recessive phenotype so untuk dominant phenotype it will be represent by individu which are homozygous dominant and also individu which are heterozygous uh, so means that kalau kita nak cari dominant phenotype frequency so So you have to calculate p square plus 2 pq. Kenapa p square? Sebab p square represent ah uh, this one frequency of homozygous dominant. What 2 pq represent frequency of heterozygous. Okay, and then kalau untuk recessive phenotype cuma ada satu lah satu genotype sahaja which is homozygous recessive. So homozygous recessive uh, genotype frequency is represent by Q square. Okay. Uh, so uh, one more thing you have to take note to calculate genotype. Uh, sorry, to calculate the phenotypic frequency. So you have to calculate genotype frequency first. Maksudnya kita kena dapatkan dulu nilai genotype frequency for each of the genotype here. Barulah kita boleh kira phenotypic frequency. Okay. So this one you have to take note because uh, mostly the question will ask you to calculate. Okay. The LF frequency and also the genotypic frequency based on Hardy-Weinberg equation.